Hello and welcome. We have now come to the end of this 40 day quick revision series of prelims 2024. Over the last 40 days, we have covered all the subjects which are important from the UPSC prelims examination point of view, especially with regards to current affairs from the past 365 days. If you have missed out on any of the classes, I am giving a playlist in the description of the video. In the thumbnail of every video, I have mentioned the subject as well. So whichever subject that you have missed out or whichever subject you are not feeling comfortable about, please feel free to go ahead and check that out. It will be really, really helpful for you to revise. In today's class, I will not be teaching you something. I am not going to discuss any subject. So why are we here today? Despite the fact that we will not be discussing any subject, I think this is one of the most important videos of this entire series that all of you must watch before you move in to give your prelims examination. Why? Because in this video, we will be discussing a few questions that everyone would have in their mind. How to attempt the paper? How many questions to attempt? Do I go all the way 90, 95, 100 attempts? Or do I stay and play very safe 50, 55 attempts? And is there any trick that I can use to solve questions? I'll also be discussing some common mistakes that you should all avoid. So do stay tuned till the very end. Also reminding you, I've launched my first comprehensive program. This is the mains answer writing program. This is not just a mains test series. It is much, much more than that. It's a program in which every single week I'll be giving you targets to study. And then in the end of the week, you will have a paper every single week. The level will increase. By the end of it, you will be able to answer each and every question that UPSC can throw at you. This will also conclude with a means test series. There are two simultaneous batches that will run for those who are targeting 2024 and those who are targeting 2025. Both of these batches have very similar targets and very similar structures. If you have any query, feel free to email or call or WhatsApp, whatever you want. Again, all the details are mentioned here. Now let's begin to see what is it that we are discussing in this class. So I'm going to throw light on these four things. First, what is the best way to attempt the paper? Second, how many questions do you attempt? Third, how to make an intelligent guess? And fourth, what are some of the common mistakes that all of you should avoid? Let's start with the first question. The best way to attempt the paper. Now this is very simple, straightforward. How do you attempt the paper? Now there are two things that I would like to advise you. As you know, there are different sets. So there are set A, B, C, D. You might get any of the set depending on whichever seat that you are sitting in. Now, because there are different sets of paper, it might happen that your paper would have questions in the beginning that are extremely, extremely tough. So it might happen that sometimes when you open the paper up and you see the first few questions are so tough that you have no idea. And that is what breaks your confidence. My suggestion is number one, go through the paper randomly. Just randomly go through the paper. Just turn the pages in the first five minutes. Look for any two to three easy questions that you know the answers of. Whatever two, three questions that you know the answers of, just randomly go through that and see which one can you answer. Just randomly. It can be number 30, it can be number 60, it can be number 18, 90 to 100, does not matter. In the first five to seven minutes, just try and mark two, three answers that you are confident about. That will give you a huge confidence boost. That will tell you that, okay, whatever you have studied is right. You are on the right track. You don't need to worry so much about it. You might not get these two, three questions, which are easy in the beginning of your paper. If you get them in the very beginning of your paper, question number one, two, three, very good. You're very lucky. But if in number one, two, three, you get some difficult questions, you have no idea what these are. Don't worry. Calm yourself down. Just randomly turn the pages. Look for those easy questions that you know. And trust me, if you have prepared well, you will find some very easy questions. If you have prepared well, if you have given the preparation at least one year, you will find some easy questions. So make sure that you go through these three, four questions, mark them, and then you will settle down. That will give you a world of confidence. And then you can begin starting from number one, because you want to give yourself that confidence that, okay, I am not out of place here. I know some things and then I can begin. So first do that. Secondly, how do you attempt the paper? Now, second thing that I usually tell students is you get your uh, booklet and you start reading the questions. 
only mark those questions in the beginning where you are 100% confident only mark those questions only mark those answers where you know yes this is the answer don't mark any other question go to 1 to 100 one by one read all the questions only attempt those where you are 100% confident now usually what happens in this case usually you will spend about half an hour 40 45 minutes in this exercise and by the end of it 1 to 100 when you go to the, all these questions you might be able to attempt 30 35 questions in some cases if you are very well prepared you might also reach 40 questions but that is fine in most cases you will reach 25 to 30 questions in this first round so first round will be again only mark those questions where you are 100 percent confident that yes i know what exactly is the answer to this once you have finished up till 100 then again start from the beginning and then mark those questions where you are confused between two options there will be a lot of questions where you will be confused between two options so in the second round you only attempt those questions where you are confused between two options where you know that out of the four at least two options are not true you are confused only in two where you have a 50 50 chance of getting it right only attempt those questions and then again come till the end now count how many questions have you already attempted if in this exercise by marking all the questions where you are confident and by marking those where you are confused between two options if you have already reached let's say 70 attempts if I've already answered 70 questions, this is good enough. If you see the trend in the past few years, cutoffs have been reducing with the increase in difficulty in CSAT and increase in difficulty of the options also, the cutoff seems to be declining. So even if you don't go and take your attempt to 85, 89, that is absolutely fine. If by doing this, that is marking wherever you are 100% confident, and marking those where you are confident between two options. If I've already, read, let's say 70 attempts, then you don't need to worry. You can stay back and relax. If you are still, let's say at 50, 55 attempts only, then you need to do some more questions because 50, 55 attempts are just not enough because you will still have some questions where you would have marked the answer wrong. In the third step, this is where, or in the fourth step rather, this is where you will look for those questions where you're confused between three options. So this is the idea of how to perfectly attempt the paper. First, mark only those questions where you're 100% confident. Then mark those questions where you're confident between two options or more. See how many have you attempted already. If not, then go ahead. In the first paper, that is GS1 paper, in prelims, you will never have shortage of time. Trust me. There's always enough time. The shortage of time usually occurs in the mains examination. In the prelims, there is no shortage of time. So you can do this practice very, very, very easily. The second big question everyone has in their mind is how many questions to attempt. Now, the interesting part is that this answer or answer to this question has been changing in the past few years. See how many questions to attempt is a question that you need to answer based on the cutoffs that we see. In the past few years, the cutoffs have been declining. Let me give you an example. 2023, this was the cutoff. General category, only 75.4 out of 200. Now, I'm talking about general category, but you can basically take a reference to other categories as well. For example, I'll just tell you what usually happens. I'm not saying all way, but usually you can assume that general cutoff and OBC cutoff are almost the same, almost the same. At max, there may be a difference of one mark, but at max, usually this is the same. When it comes to EWS cutoff, you can assume it to be 10% lower than general cutoff. So whatever the general cutoff is, 10% lower, assume it to be the EWS cutoff. What about the schedule cast? Schedule cast cutoff, almost 20% lower than general. Almost 20% lower than general. And then if you look at schedule tribes, almost 30 percent lower than general again i am not saying this is a rule i am just giving you a pattern that we have seen in the last few years whichever category you belong to you can take your own guess so general and obc usually the same cutoff very little difference 1.5.6 marks is a difference usually not more than that ews that has just started a few years back 10 percent lower than general usually 
Scheduled cast can be 20% lower than general. Scheduled track can be 30%. Again, I am not saying this is always a rule. Let me show you some other things. So look at how the cutoffs have changed in the past few years for general category. 2019 cutoff was 98. 2020, 92.51. 2021, lower than uh, almost the same and then drastically lower in 2023. The reason why there was it was such a low cutoff in 2023, there were two major reasons for that. One, extremely tough CSAT paper. I personally know about at least three students who cleared the GS paper, who had over 75 marks very easily. They had their marks in 80s, but they could not clear the CSAT. So that is a big problem. Because of the tough CSAT paper, the cutoff has reduced. And second, because of the kind of options that we are seeing now only one, only two, all three, these kind of options have complicated things. Because of this reducing cutoff, gone are the days where everyone used to suggest attempt at least 85, 90 questions. If your accuracy is good and the question paper is still at the same difficult level, then even attempting 70, 72 would be a good attempt. Please understand this. Now, the other question that people have in their mind is, how will you get to know is the paper tough or not? Many people ask this question, sir, if I attempted very less question thinking it was a tough paper, but others thought it's an easy paper, then what would I do? See, this is where you have to trust yourself. If you have prepared seriously for one year, sitting in the examination hall, when you get the question paper, you will be able to identify whether it is an easy paper or a tough paper and trust your judgment. If again, just like last year, most of the options are like this only, only one only, or any one, any two, then it's a tough paper. You will be able to identify the level of the questions because you have also prepared very well. If it seems tough to you, it will be tough for everyone. So don't worry about that. Trust your judgment because that is extremely, extremely important. So again, if the paper follows the same pattern, then you have to be conservative in your attempts. Don't go overall because negative marking can hurt you significantly. If you obviously, if you know 80 answers, then you will mark 80 answers. You will not stop at 70 just because I told you. You will mark 80 answers if you know 80. But don't take a lot of chances if you are not sure because again, the cutoff trend is something like this. I'm not saying the trend will go even lower, but again, it has to be dependent on the level of the questions. These are the general cutoffs that we have seen over the years of all the categories. Again, I am not saying the same rule follows, but you can see here lump sum 10% fall in EWS cutoff here. Over here, it's an even bigger fall as compared to 10%. In fact, it's a almost, I would say about 15%, 16% fall. Then OBC, as you can see, OBC general, there is not much difference in schedule cars and schedule types. Again, that is how it usually works. Again, that does not mean the pattern will remain the same. Every single year pattern changes. Every single year the cutoff may also change depending on the level of the paper. And now the part that many of you are waiting for, how to make guesses in the paper. There will always be a lot of questions where you are not sure of the answer. In that case, can you make some guess? The answer is yes. But will all your guesses be right? Obviously not. So before I tell you some tricks, of how to attempt the paper, how to make some intelligent guesses. Please, please, please listen to this carefully. This is not a 100% short shot method. This can go wrong. Please use this only if you don't have any other option available. The first option should always be to trust your knowledge. If you have no idea, if you have forgotten, if you have not attempted enough questions and you are under pressure that you need to attempt some more questions, even after using all your knowledge, you could only attempt 50, 52 questions. You have to attempt some more only then use these tricks. Again, I take no assurance that 100% of these tricks will work. This is just based on certain patterns that have been seen in the past few years. So please do look at these, but please only use them when you don't have any other option available. I am warning you time and time again, do not trust them blindly. Now, what are these tricks? I'll show you five or six tricks with examples, real examples. First trick, everyone would have told you, avoid the extremes. Whenever you have any extreme statement or these kind of words, these are usually wrong. Whenever these words are you, these are usually wrong. Again, I am 
time and time again saying usually wrong, not always. Let me give you some examples. Let's look at a few questions. So there was a question about trans-Pacific partnership. Let's look at the first one. Agreement amongst all the Pacific Rim countries except China, Russia, the word all. No, it is wrong. It's an extreme word. Strategic alliance for purpose of maritime security only. Again, only is an extreme word. Both of these are wrong. The answer is D. Again, I'll show you many examples, but please don't trust them blindly. Let me give you another example. Gram Nyayale Act, which all the statements are correct. All these, by the way, are questions that UPSC has asked in the prelims. So I am taking all these questions from previous year papers. As per the act, Gram Nyayale can only hear civil, not criminal cases wrong. That is why the answer is two only. Let me show you some more examples. What is or are the most likely advantages of implementing the GST? Now look at this. Look at the second statement. It will drastically reduce. Now drastically reduce means an extreme statement. Third, it will enormously increase again an extreme statement. So here again, the two extremes are wrong. Second is wrong. Third is wrong. The answer is first only. But again, please, please, please don't trust these blindly. Only use these techniques when you have no other option available, when you don't have any knowledge about this and you still need to attempt this question, only then use these tricks and they will help you. Now you might say, but sir, now the options are different. We have only one, only two or any one, any two options. Then what do we do? Even then it will make your job easier. Even if you have options like any one, any two, even then if you can eliminate any of the statements, it will make your job slightly easier, right? So it's just about making your chances better, making your probability of getting the answer higher. Then one more with reference to Chaucer Yogini Temple uh, near Morena, what are these statements? Are these right or wrong? Again, UPS has asked this. Look at the second statement. It is the only circular built temple in India. The word only means second is wrong. And because the options are like that, that we can eliminate the options wherever two is written that is wrong the answer then becomes C automatically. So there have been times when these kind of tricks have worked in the past. What more? The Montego Chainsword reforms of 1919 recommended granting voting rights to all women among above the age of 21 wrong because of all the answer here is B. Okay. So I'm giving you examples to prove this theory, but again, this, it does not come with no exception. There are some exceptions. This was the first, uh, trick that is to avoid the extremes. Trick number two, usually departments or parent organizations, whenever given in a statement are usually wrong. Again, the keyword here is usually not always. So if you know for sure, then go with your knowledge. But if you're not sure, is it right or wrong? You have to make a guess then usually departments of paint organizations are wrong. I'll give you some examples. Look at this. Look at the second statement. The question about water credit. Second statement is it is a global initiative under the ages of WHO and World Bank wrong. Now you have to start the right answer, but these organizations actually are wrong. This is not an initiative of WHO and World Bank together. Let me give you another example. It's a question from 2021. The UN Capital Development Fund and the Arbor Day Foundation recently organized or uh, recognized Hyderabad as a 2023 city of the world. No, organizations again are wrong. That is why the answer is D. First is wrong, second is true. So these organizations, parent organizations, departments that are given are usually wrong in most of the cases. Look at one more. Financial Stability Development Council. It is an organ of the Niti Aayog. Again, it will be wrong. The parent department will be wrong. So again, there are multiple examples to prove that this happens, but there can be examples in which the department given is right as well. So please don't trust this blindly. It's like that packet of cigarette that you get where there is a warning sign at the outside of the packet that it is injurious to your health. Don't smoke. But those who want to smoke, they still do. So this is me telling you the tricks, but telling you it comes with a warning. It will not be true always. One more again, all these questions have been asked by UPSC in the past. These are all previous year questions with reference to organization for the prohibition of chemical weapons. 
look at the first statement it is an organization of european union working relation with nato who wrong parent department is wrong so whenever you have these kind of parent departments or uh, organizations given that this organization does this job it is usually wrong by you it's, it's a pattern that has been seen over the years one more with reference to initiative called the economics of ecosystem and biodiversity which of these are wrong again the parent is wrong here hosted by unep imf world economic forum no wrong so this is where it can be helpful for you if you want to attempt more and you think you have not attempted enough these are certain tricks that you can actually apply one more the global ocean commission grants licenses for seabed exploration no wrong organization again the answer is two and three only so this is how you can attempt more questions trick number three in most of the cases again please 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 be aware not always would it work for you but in most of the cases if a statement has certain dates years or figures they are usually wrong usually wrong not always usually wrong let me take you some examples question about agenda 21 second statement says it was uh, originated in a world summit held in 2002 no the year is wrong usually when years dates months these kind of things are given these statements are usually seen to be incorrect prelims 2024 the question was about BRICS. the first BRICS summit was held in Rio de Janeiro 2009 wrong the year again is wrong so the answer is b so not just the parent department's organization even the dates usually are wrong uh, then with reference to agni 4 which of the following statements are correct now look at this we are applying two tricks here second statement fueled by liquid problem only so word only means it's wrong second again a figure has been given again wrong the range of agni 4 is not 7500 kilometers in fact agni 5 also is only 5000 kilometers of range so again this is wrong so these are some of the things that you can apply if you are in a situation where you want to attempt more questions but you don't know now to the last part what are some of the common mistakes that many students do and what do you need to avoid here first the most common mistake or blunder other i would say many people do you might also have a habit of it many students what they do is they mark a question they know what the answer is so they will mark the answer in the question paper they believe that after solving all the questions in the very end then i will basically mark the answer in the omr sheet if you are also one of them and again the i don't know the logic behind it but many people do this that you solve the question but you mark the answer only in your question paper you don't mark it in the answer sheet don't mark it in the omr the i don't know the logic but the plan is that in the end i will mark all the peop, uh, question in the omr one by one all together please don't do that i know many students who could not calculate how much time would it take to mark those rounds to mark those dots in the omr there have been times when the time was over the omr was taken away from them they had solved a lot of question in the question paper but they just could not mark it in the omr so please 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 don't do that mistake please don't do that mistake where you just mark all the questions here in the question paper and don't write them in the omr please the best part or the best suggestion i would say is when you have written the answer mark it in the omr directly if not if you think that no i will do it together in the omr then at least start half an hour before the paper has to be over give yourself at least half an hour or even more because you you don't know how much time would it actually take you to mark all these answers so if you still want to uh, follow that habit that no i will mark my answers in the omr in the end only then give yourself at least 30 minutes of time if not more at least 30 minutes have to be given please 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 keep that in mind one more thing about csat paper the csat paper has been becoming tougher every single year which is a fact now i can't tell you right now how to get the best out of csat paper the pattern has changed in the past one two years you are not even getting those questions where if you solve one question you can mark three or four answers but in the csat paper when you get the paper open up the paper if you have those kind of questions graph based table based questions 
where by solving one table you are able to answer three four questions which are related to it please start with those questions as i said in the past few years in the past one two years we don't get those kind of questions but if you do get those questions please give most time to those when you start attempting your paper search for those questions where table or graph based question they have been given where if you even if you give 10 12 15 minutes to solve that table fine at least you will be able to answer three to four questions based on that which will all be correct so please make sure you do that one more other mistake that people do see this is what upsc has on their website the upsc basically gives a warning to not write anything else on the sheet which you are not supposed to write it can be anything do not write anything else any religious symbol any slogan nothing do not write anything on the sheet on the omr sheet that you have to now these are uh, mains papers but even in the omr sheet please 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 do not write except what you are supposed to write just mark your answers roll number etc that is good enough please 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 don't do this mistake do not write anything else over the paper under the paper you might be the most religious person in the world keep your god to yourself the god will help you writing the god's name or any number on the paper will certainly not help you out and it might actually go against you please don't do that also do not write your name wherever it is not required it is all very very strictly prohibited by the upsc and this is the official curtain down on this quick revision series of prelims 2024 i hope you have enjoyed it i hope it has been helpful for all of you and i really really wish you all the very best for the upcoming prelims examination i will be making a few more videos related to prelims before the prelims examination hits if you have not hit the subscribe button please do that like this video and as always become part of telegram channel the link is in the description of the video we are coming up with many more initiatives all the very best bye bye jai hind